Welcome back to 40 2090s. On the record, we are joined by Lauren Mallet Hayes, the Democrat running for U.S. Congress to replace Steve Wilmack. So let's talk about the budget. Uh, right now, we are in debt. So how do we control spending? How do we fix and balance that budget? We've got to prioritize. Um, I think we are putting our money in the wrong places. We have a huge military budget right now, and don't get me wrong, I think we need a well-funded military, but it's the highest funded, um, it's the highest funded um, section of our budget, but it's also the highest amount that we've ever spent on the military, and we're not at war anymore. Um, and so there's not really, to me, a need that we need to have that high of a budget. And when we do increase the, the military spending, I'd like to see more of it go to our military personnel versus supplies and equipment that we already have a ton of. Um, so I think reallocating some of that to the, the more um, higher needs areas is going to be um, extremely important. And then I would really like to see an overhaul of every governmental program that we have. I think there's a lot of inefficiency and we can probably save a lot of money in the processes. I know I was talking to somebody and if all of the governmental um, agencies throughout the United States had the same internet provider, um, it would save somewhere around like $1 billion for taxpayers. So it's little things like that that we have to be looking for, being innovative in the way that we can save money. Um, we have one of the oldest Congress, or, or our Congress is very old, if you look at the average age of our congressional leaders. And that's not a bad thing. They've been around and they have um, a lot of world experience. But my generation and the generations under me, we've also got a lot of new technology at our fingertips and a lot of ideas and innovative things that we can be doing. And so I think if we have a good mixture in Congress of both older and younger um, leaders that we can um, create some new innovative ways to save money though, than we are right now. You said taking some money from the Department of Defense. Where would you allocate that money? Honestly, education is huge. I think mm -hmm. education, when you look at, especially in Arkansas, we are one of the lowest educated um, states. However, when you look at the people that are educated, we actually fall uh, in the top 50% of the, the type of education or um, the quality of that education. So it's um, increasing the opportunity for people, especially in rural areas that don't have um, access, whether it be transportation or even financially access to higher education. Um, we know not, not everybody's gonna go to college, but at the high school I went to um, was a small high school in, in Texas actually and I was by the time I started college I was a sophomore because we had dual credit classes where I could get courses for a much cheaper rate um, during high school and then move on into the college um, college world I want to see the same thing with technology and um, tech schools you know how do we get access to these high schoolers so that they know that there's other jobs out there that can pay well that doesn't require them to go to college and spend a ton of money um, how do we bring that to them yes we can have them in the area but if they can't get there it's not doing them any good so can we set up teleeducation or can we set up transportational opportunities for them to be able to access that so that they can create better paying jobs for themselves because if we can in increase the, the education level of all Americans, it's going to increase their access to opportunities um, in the long run. Okay. How do you think Congress initially handled uh, Russia and Ukraine's situation? You know, I actually was very surprised um, that we did see most of our, our state federal leaders um, side with Ukraine. Um, and I think for the most part, most of Congress uh, did want to uh, give their full support. I definitely understand that we're in a really tough spot. We don't want to trigger um, what we would consider World War III, and we just don't know kind of the stability of what Russia might do. So I think we've, we're doing as much as we can, and each day we're trying to create new ways that we can um, hopefully de-escalate that situation in, in order for uh, Russia to, to pull back and, and you know, support Ukraine. I just think uh, we're probably going to have to help a lot more after it's all said and done because we're seeing the destruction that's happening in their country. Okay, you have about one minute to tell us why you feel that you're the best fit for a U.S. Con a congressional uh, seat, District 3. Yeah, so Congressional um, Representative Steve Womack has been in office for 12 years, and in that time, he's really only passed one bill that did not really... Um, do anything for our Kansans. It's not making your lives better. And the work that we're seeing put in by Congressional Representative Womack is just not what I feel like our Kansans need. On the flip side of that, you also see um, <clears throat> the leaders that we have right now talking about a, a specific group of our Kansans who they want to work for. And I want to work for all our Kansans. Every day um, at the hospital, all of my patients, I have a, a, a plethora of people, whether you're uh, a Democrat or Republican, whether you're um, Hispanic or Caucasian or African-American. African 
I don't care. I want to work for you, and I think that our Kansans deserve leaders that want to work for everybody. We've got to have leaders that can bring everybody to the table and work on these problems that affect everyone, not just the right side or the left side. All right, Lauren Mallet Hayes, thank you so much for you. joining us on 4020 90s on thank the you. record. Congressional Senate uh, District, Congressional Candidate for District <laughs> 3 here in Arkansas.